Hi everybody, it's Jay Dan and I just wanted to make a quick video to address one of the most common questions that I get on the blog and that is, how did you learn football? I know a lot of people want to get into football and it just looks very confusing to them and they're just wondering where to start. And so I don't have anything groundbreaking to say unfortunately, <laughs> but I'm hoping that I can help just a little bit. There are two ways to learn, watching, obviously, and two, reading. And I really think that the reading part is an important part of it. For some reason, sports seems to be one of the only topics where people are proud not to learn a fucking thing more than they already know. It is so odd to me. I love learning things about football. It's one of the best things about my blog is that in my reading I learn so much and it helps me, you know, keep my content fresh, keep my thoughts fresh, keep my analysis um, somewhere uh, close to accurate. So, so obviously the watching part is the easiest part. The reading. I say start with your team's local paper. I love the Eagles and the Falcons. The larger market papers like Philadelphia where everybody, it's sort of like a rabid sports, sports town, um, they're going to have a lot of coverage for you because those fans want to know what is going on with their team. They get into the nuts and bolts of why your team is messing up, winning, whatever. They give a lot of context. They talk about the team's past, and it gives you an opportunity to really learn the game incrementally, so I highly recommend that. The Atlanta Journal-Constitution and other places where there's a little bit of a smaller market. They still do a great job and they're worth, worth checking out. You may also have to supplement some of that with like the ESPN blogs that they have for each division, which I think are really good and you can follow them on Twitter. They're, they're actually pretty entertaining. But I like the local coverage because it's a little bit less sensational. When you go to other sites, they may only really cover your team when something's going on, like they're losing big or one of the players says something that gets attention. So I think the local coverage is just a little bit more continuous, contextual, um, that kind of thing. So you don't become one of those those sports fans that are only into the outrageous stuff. You can actually really know the game a little bit more. I think that building knowledge organically is the best way to do it unless you have some burning reason to learn everything about football right now, which I can't think of a reason that you, <laughs> you'd really need to, um, to do that. And plus, it takes the fun out of learning the game to make it like a, some sort of study project. To make the reading... Um, more interesting, obviously, get it somewhere where you really enjoy getting info. NFL.com does a great job. They have some really great reporters, really great writing. It draws you into the, some of the storylines. Go out and find some of the blogs that you like. Playerperspective.com. My blog, I obviously highly recommend, but there are other ones that I read, like Gridiron Gab. I also read... Um, Cole, Hard Football Facts, Football Outsiders, and some of those blogs like Football Outsiders and um, Pro Football Focus, they're, they tend to be a little bit more for football nerds, but I think there's something there for everyone. Um, same thing with SmartFootball.com. And also Yahoo Shutdown Corner blog, I think is a, is a good blog to kind of get an idea of what's going on around the league. And they don't just post sensational headlines when they post something they give you a little bit of background and they also do some breakdowns if you're interested in seeing some very simplified breakdowns of what's going on in the field national football post is a good um, reference and i'll put these blogs up um, to kind of help you out there's also a lot of resources on the web to learn the basic things about football because that really is the first step you really need to know what a first down is you need to know the positions on offense know a quarterback know a wide receiver from a running back those kinds of things are really helpful and there's nothing wrong with reading up and finding out what that is and then you can go on youtube and actually see it in action youtube has a lot of learning videos a lot of game highlights and things like that um there's also t message boards People spend a lot of time on message boards, and you can go to the message boards for your team, not on the team website, but like privately runs. For me, Bleeding Green is the Philadelphia Eagles one that I go to. Falcoholics is the Falcons one that I go to. And people share a lot of good links and information and things like that. And, you know, Sports Illustrated is one 
um, one publication and and site that I really I really like to read. I also like bo like books a lot. Um, one of my favorite books is Take Your Eyes Off the Ball, and I'm gonna be giving that one away to to one lucky person. So stay tuned for that. But like I said, there's a lots of free resources as well, and I'll I'll post some links for that to help. Getting into the game, I think that when you look at it, when you look at football, it can just look like a melee. Like what is going on? Because you can really only see maybe like one sixteenth of what's going on in the field, maybe even one one hundredth. There's football's complicated, there's a lot going on. So I think that you have to one, get some sort of attachment to the game. Pick a team, pick a player, pick a couple players for whatever reason. Looks, talent, you like the position, the colors, uniforms, whatever. People come up with a lot of rules about being a football fan and what you can and can't do and the best reason to like a team. Don't get into all of that. You know, have your own mind, your own opinion, and get attached in whatever way that makes you happy. If there's a player that you saw on TV and he's doing this great thing with the foundation or he's cute or you saw some uniform that you like, then that's that's what you can follow and that's where you can you know, kind of get an attachment to the game. Um, find something to like about the game is the second thing, and feel free to focus on that. For me, the draw is defense. Defensive back is my favorite position. I know more about it than any other position. Um, if I don't do anything else, I'll check to see what defensive backs across the league are doing. You know, I'll look at their stats and compare them and that kind of thing. I know a lot about defense in general. I'm not really here for offense. I'm not going to talk a whole lot about routes and rushing yards. I know some of that stuff, but it's not what gets me excited about the game. Um, in general, I like strategy. I like strategic thinking, and football is full of that, and it's what draws me in. So if you find something about the game you really like, it's going to be way easier for you to learn and read about it. One thing that I hear from women, and I think this is important, I hear that they feel like they're behind on knowledge. They want to know how long it takes to be conversant. They feel like all the guys know more and they're like, oh, I can't talk to them about stuff. Let's be clear. A whole lot of guys who talk about sports and football in particular do not know as much as they seem to know. And that's why we hear all these debates about who's the best this or that. What's the best team in history? You know, these sort of like circular arguments that don't require a lot of knowledge. Don't I mean, that doesn't mean that they know a whole lot. Football is really complicated and the bulk of people only know the basics. And that is just fine. You don't have to get involved in all the arguments and, and stuff like that. There's a lot of scenarios in football that you can watch for years and you can never see them or only see them once or twice. So not everyone knows the same thing about football. I'll give you an example. I can't remember the last time I saw someone actually get their own onside kick. It's, I mean, it happens. <laughs> but until this weekend, I think it had been a while since I'd actually seen one during um, during a game when the Broncos got theirs against Miami. You don't see fake kicks and fake punts all the time. I think in week five of the NFL that happened a few times with the Steelers and I think there was another team that did it. Um, I've seen one tie personally in my lifetime and that was uh, the Eagles had a tie I think with the Giants. Um, so you know you don't see all the you can't be expected to know everything that happens in football because it is really complicated and again most people know the basics and that's fine. I think the most intimidating thing is when you hear people talk about great moments that they've seen or they make reference to certain things in football and you have no idea what they're talking about. You have no idea what some of these great players have done. But listening to those convos is a good way to learn. You don't have to chime in on it. And again, some people are speaking about players that you know, played before they were even born. So there's no telling what they really know about it as well. But get to know the basics, you know, read at your leisure. Don't, you know, force yourself to know stuff and don't force the conversation. Those are my tips. I've reached out to some other people that know football really well that I respect and I asked them to tell me what they would recommend to a new football watcher and I posted their answers on the blog and um, I'm going to post links to all the resources that I talked about underneath uh, this post and stay tuned for my book giveaway because I'm excited about that. Until next time, bye.